Hello students and welcome back to your study help videos. This one is chapter 3 which was measures of central tendency. Okay, central tendency is a statistical measure um, all three of them are. Mean, median and mode is what we're looking at here. Um, and they are single scores that attempt to identify or define the center of a distribution. The purpose is to find the single score that is most typical or best represents the entire group. So if I have a set of test scores and I want to see what, how the average student did, I would look at mean, which is the average in general. Okay, and Depending on the situation, one measure of central tendency will be better than others. So for that last example, the mean often is what you try to look for in tests. But for example, say somebody uh, if it's a Scantron test, they just drew patterns instead of trying to do well on the tests, and they got a 10%. So that's what an outlier would be, and you would use something besides the mean in that case. Okay, definitions and examples of your three measures of central tendency. The mean, these are the basic, basic definitions, by the way. The mean is the sum of all scores divided by the number of scores. Okay, so in this example, if you add all five scores up, you would get 35 divided by 5 and your mean is 7. Okay, on the second one, the median is the number in the middle after they're being ordered from least to greatest. Excuse me. So for this example, you have 4, 6, 7, 9 and 10. If you find the middle, 7 is the middle. Okay? Um that one's easy because you have an odd number, so there's only one number. You have an odd number of numbers for your data okay but if there is an even number you average the middle two instead because there's not just going to be one number in the middle if you have even number okay the mode is the number that occurs the most often I think that one's the easiest so for this example of four numbers here, you have the number four occurring twice, so your mode is four. Characteristics of the mean, the main one that you should know is that changing a value in the series changes the mean. This makes sense because it's an average. So like I said earlier, when you have an outlier, it affects your mean a lot, and as you get further and further into stats, you'll see why that's important. So here we go, um, for the first example, the total of those of those five numbers is 25, so your mean is 5. And you, you can see that I only change one number here in the second example. I change 6 to 11, which gives us five more total value for the series. Okay, So now it's 30 divided by 5, and your mean is 6. And I just change one number. All right, And as I said, you can see more drastically with different sets of data. This one's just a very simple example. All right, this table is vital to your success in this class, okay? I don't know what works best for you as a student. When I took this class, I had the PowerPoint slide printed out from this. Um, that's what I would recommend, but just find what works best for you, okay? This will help you determine when a certain measure of central tendency is the best. Okay, so for example, like I said earlier, where's my mouse? Here we go. Median is often good for skewed distributions. Okay, you wouldn't want to use a skewed distribution to find the average. Like I said earlier, somebody gets a 10% on a Scantron test because they're just filling in patterns. They're going to really throw off the mean. Okay. So to find what best represents how students did, you would look for the median, the number in the middle, or the value in the middle of your series of scores to see how the average student did. Central tendency and distributions. Um, this gets hairy for some people. So symmetrical distributions, that just means they're the same on each side. Mean and median have the same value. If there is only one mode, it has the same value as the mean and the median, but the distribution may or may not have a mode. Okay, so I'll show you this in a graph on the next slide. 
So for this symmetrical distribution, here on the, the first one on the left, everything mean, median, and mode is in the very center. Here on the second one, this bimodal distribution, I want to make the point that mode is always at the highest peak. Ooh. Mode is always at the highest peak because it occurs the most often. All right. So if there were values over here, this would have the highest number and your mode is what occurs most often. And again, in a symmetrical distribution, your mean and your median are in the very middle. Okay, central tendency and skewed distributions. This throws some people off, um, just skewed distributions in general. Okay, if you want some clarification, I would look at page 81 in your textbook. Um, read the paragraph there and it'll really help you. All right. Mean influenced by extreme scores is found far towards the long tail, positive or negative. Median, in order to divide the scores in half, is found towards the long tail, but not as far as the mean, and the mode is found near the short tail. Okay, so here we have a positively, distrib positively skewed distribution, and you can see how they're different from symmetrical. All right, your mean is way closer out to the tail because of these outlying scores that bring your average up from the middle of the distribution. Same thing can be said for negatively skewed. Your mean is out here towards the tail. Telling positive and negatively skewed distributions apart is tough for some people. Um, again, you should find what works for you. But in this class, when I took it, I thought of a number line down here on the x-axis. So if you recall, your positive numbers are towards the right. So if the, the distribution is skewed with the line towards positive, that's how I remembered it was a positively skewed distribution. Again, find what helps you. And vice versa for negatively. You got your negative numbers towards the left on your number line. So here's your skew. That's how you can tell negative. 